Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x over x squared plus 1 equals x squared plus 1 over x squared. And we're going to be solving for f, which means we're going to be finding an expression for f of x in terms of x. But that x is not going to be the same as this x, so don't get confused. Okay? And I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and set this whole thing inside the parentheses equal to something. That's my input, right? And I want that to be a single variable. Why? Because at the end, I want to find an expression for f of x. It doesn't matter. It could be f of t, f of u, whatever. But the idea is to turn that input into something manageable, like a single variable, okay? Because this is a function of x. You could also approach this problem from a composition perspective, like we have f of g, where g is the function inside the parentheses, which is x over x squared plus 1. And then you want to get f from here. How do you get f? You need to compose this with g inverse, because g and g inverse, get, when, get, uh, when they are composed, it gives us the identity, which means they kind of disappear. I know this is very non-rigorous, but who cares, right? And at the end, we end up with f. That's the goal. So that's what we're going to do here. Set x over x squared plus 1 equal to a variable. How about t? Let's go ahead and set it equal to t. And our goal is to solve for x in terms of t. So we can go ahead and substitute that on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and solve this for x. Do you think that's going to be easy? Let's find out. x equals x squared t plus t. And I want to bring everything together like maybe like this, tx squared minus x plus t equals 0. Notice that this is quadratic in x, so the solution will involve two solutions. Does that make sense? I mean, there will be two solutions, that's what I meant. So there will be two roots. Which one are we going to use? Does it matter? It shouldn't. Okay, let's just use one of them, and you can always check the other one. So using the quadratic formula, we get x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. Remember, b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 1, plus minus, um, wait a minute, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, yes, minus 4ac. 4ac is going to be 4t squared. All right, great. And then the, all of that is divided by 2t. 2t or not 2t if you are a tutor. Okay. Anyways. Now, from here, we kind of need to pick something. Let's pick the, the one with the plus sign. So, this one. So, I can now write x in terms of t. Great. Now, we can go ahead and substitute that into our expression. But what is our expression? Let's go back to the original. f of x over x plus 1 is equal to x squared plus 1 over x squared. So, I can actually go ahead and plug it in, right? But again, the question is, does it matter? That's for you to check. Let me go ahead and replace x with what it is. By the way, you don't need to do it here because uh, it should give us t, doesn't it? I mean, because we already, that's where we came from. I mean, you shouldn't need to do it. I mean, you, you, if you want to double check things, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on the right-hand side only because I know that I'm going to be getting f of t from the left-hand side. x will be replaced with 1 plus the square root of 1 minus 4t squared divided by 2t. And I need to square it. And then I need to square it and find the reciprocal. So I can safely say that uh, the reciprocal of the square will be the square of the reciprocal. So I can just find the reciprocal, flip it, and then square it, which is going to give me the exact same thing. And then this should be the answer. Okay, that kind of looks complicated. So let's try to simplify this a little bit. Can we? Let's give it a try. So here, uh, we're going to be getting the square of something, like a sum. So it's going to be a squared, b squared, and then 2ab is going to give us 2 times this, right? And then in the denominator, we should be getting 4t squared. And here, we should just get the exact same opposites. Maybe we can go ahead and simplify this because it's going to be the same thing. And then, you know, take care of it later. By the way, I noticed that we can go ahead and simplify by 2. So this is going to give us 2. So after division by 2, f of t should be something like this. 1 minus 2t squared plus square root of 1 minus 4t squared divided by 2t squared. And then the same thing but the reciprocal of that, 2t squared 
divided by 1 minus 2t squared plus the square root of 1 minus 4t squared. Great, now we can go ahead and make a common denominator, right? But they are really complicate things, don't you think? I mean, I'm going to have to square this with three terms and then multiply 2t squared by itself. That's going to give us, you know, really large um, expressions, okay? So that's going to complicate things. So why don't we just go ahead and leave it like this? But remember, our goal was to solve for f of x, right? Maybe if I continue, something good will come out of it, but I'll leave it at that for you to work out. But if I replace t with x, again, this is not the same x. you got to remember that. Uh, I'm going to be getting something like this. Just replace all the t's with x's, and it should give you something like this, right? Square root of 1 minus 4x squared. Now, this is the first method, and again, this can be simplified more. But let's go ahead and quickly talk about the second method, and we'll... Uh, Trust me, it's going to be faster, okay? So f of x over x plus 1, I mean x squared plus 1, is x squared plus 1 over x squared, okay? So what does the second method uh, depend on, right? So we're going to start with this. Notice that we can take uh, the x plus 1 over x, and I'll tell you why we're using it, and square it. That's going to give us x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2ab is going to give us 2. So I can actually isolate this. And write x squared plus 1 over x squared as x plus 1 over x quantity squared minus 2. That's something that I can use on the right-hand side, right? But what about the left-hand side? Good. Now, if you go ahead and flip that, write it as 1 over x squared plus 1 over x, you'll probably realize the following. This can be written as x plus 1 over x. And it's just awesome. You know why? Because if you go ahead and write it this way, f of 1 over x plus 1 over x equals, and the right-hand side is just x plus 1 over x quantity squared minus 2. And now, if you go ahead and set the whole thing equal to a variable like t, or whatever variable you want to use, I'm, I'll use t again, but this time it's a lot easier because from here we get x plus 1 over x equals 1 over t, the reciprocal. And now this is something we can substitute here. So we're going to get f of t equals 1 over t squared minus 2. And that would be just simply 1 minus 2t squared divided by t squared. Now, you might be questioning, like, why didn't we get something simple from the first method? I probably made a mistake somewhere, or I just didn't simplify it the way I should be doing that. So, anyways, you will let me know what you think, because I want you to really work it out and find out the same answer using the very first method. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.